This chapter will provide you with a comprehensive review of the Cubase plugin system. Our goal is to help you make more effective use of your plugins, avoid some common pitfalls, and maybe discover a few gems that you didn't know were here. By the end of the chapter, you'll have a solid understanding of latency and RAM issues, multi-channel plugins, quick controls and automation, a review of the lesser known plugs, and how to manage your plugin library. We usually associate the term plugin with audio effects, but a plugin is any program that runs inside of another program. So this can include a lot more than just audio effects. In fact, Cubase also classifies MIDI effects and virtual instruments as plugins. This is why you'll see virtual instruments mixed in with the effects throughout this chapter. And don't forget there's a wealth of information available in the plugin reference manual, which you access using the help menu. Not all plugins are created equal. The earlier generation, prior to VST3, had limited capabilities by today's standards. VST3 plugins have gray bars in front of their names. This may help you troubleshoot some unexpected behaviors. Plugins will introduce some latency, although it's usually pretty minor, and Cubase automatically compensates for it. However, some plugins introduce enough latency that the compensation becomes noticeable during recording or playing live. Surprisingly, the biggest offenders are Dynamics processors using the Look Ahead feature. There are two ways to control this. First, you can activate the Constrained Delay Compensation function in the project window. Second, you can run your Dynamics processors in live mode, which defeats the Look Ahead. Plugins can also use up a lot of RAM. There are several ways to compensate for this. Use the light version of effects while tracking, and deactivate effects you're not using. Using bypass leaves them processing in the background. Use preferences to suspend processing if no signal is present. Use sends instead of inserts when possible to keep the number of plugins to a minimum. Look at the difference in performance between 10 insert effects and one send effect. The same advice applies to VST instruments. If you create 10 instrument tracks, you're also creating 10 virtual instruments. If your goal is simply to capture multiple takes, try this. Use the lanes feature. Use a single VST instrument in a rack and record multiple takes on MIDI tracks. The audio effects in Cubase are grouped into these families based on their function, and most are very familiar effects. However, there are a few of those hidden gems in here that are often overlooked. Let me give you a brief introduction to a few favorites that you might not have played with yet. Mod Machine is listed as a delay, but it incorporates modulation and EQ. Bit Crusher can be useful for lo fi effects. Grungelizer is great for simulating vintage vinyl. And of course, the envelope shaper works well with drums to provide simulated compression effects. In fact, it works so well that it's now included in the channel strip for every input. The step filter is one of my favorites, and it works great for breaks in dance music. It has separate windows to adjust resonance and cutoff frequency, and it cycles through however many steps you designate, and it has a variety of patterns. <laughs> Transformer and Metalizer generate similar resonant effects.
Octaver can add a sub bass style low end to kick drums or bass. Now we'll go over some of the more sophisticated effects like multiband compression, side chaining, and the mid-side processing in the chapter on advanced production. You can make better use of your plugins using quick controls and automation. If the plugin you're using is a VST3 plugin, right-click on the parameter you want to control, and you can assign it to a quick control or call up its automation lane. If the plugin is not a VST3 compatible unit, you can still assign it to a quick control. Select the slot that you want to use, then click the L button to engage learn mode. Now move the control on the plugin. You can always click on the quick control slot and then drill down through the folder list. Finally, let's look at how to optimize your plugin library. Open the devices menu and select plugin information. This is the control center for all of your plugins. Along the top, you'll see these tabs that group them by type. And at first glance, this may seem like the most boring screen in all of Cubase, but there are two important reasons why you need to know about this window. First, it contains some key information. And second, it can help you solve two really annoying problems. The most important information columns here are latency values and instances. Click on a column heading to sort by that value. So here you can see which effects are the biggest memory hogs. And here, you can also see how many instances you have of each plugin. This can help you troubleshoot performance issues. It's a quick way to see if another engineer in your facility has cleverly managed to turn on 42 instances of Reverence, for example. And by the way, it's normal to have loads of standard panners active, and that won't cause any latency issues. The first really annoying problem that you can solve is tracking down expired demos. We've all downloaded trial versions of plugins, which we never purchased. And after the trial period expires, you'll often continue to get warnings and reminders about the expired plugin. The only way to stop that is to remove the demo, but they can be very hard to find. However, if you look at the path column here, it will tell you precisely where you can go find it and kill it. The other really annoying problem is that with huge numbers of plugins, your effects menus fill up. If there are plugins that you don't use very often, you can uncheck them in this first column. Now, this won't delete anything, it just keeps them from showing up in the drop down menu. If you open a project that uses a hidden plugin, it will still play back and edit just fine. Also, hiding only removes them from the drop down menus. If you open the plugins section on the audio menu, they're all still available. Now, let's move on to chapter 8 and get into the instruments.